हेलो स्टूडेंट होप यू आर फाइन एंड सेफ सो वेलकम अगेन इन सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल इंजीनियरिंग यूनिट नेम वन सेकेंड लेक्चर दैट इज फ्लो ऑफ फ्लूड वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस द कोर्स आउटकम सो स्टूडेंट इन माई लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैड डिस्कस अबाउट फ्लो ऑफ फ्लूड्स इंक्लूडिंग फ्लूड स्टैटिक्स and dynamics than reynolds number and experiment than manometer and its type than bernoulli's theorem so in today's talk i will discuss about the energy losses so student think what do you mean by energy losses and then we'll discuss about the measurement of rate of flow of fluid so initially what do you mean by energy losses so in bernoulli's theorem we have discuss about total energy per unit mass consist of pressure kinetic and potential energy at any point of fluid is constant and we already discuss energy added by the pump is w and the loss of energy due to the friction is f and according to the law of conservation of energy energy balance how to be properly calculated so fluid experiences energy losses in several ways while flowing through the pipe and these are the various losses occurred consider this is the pipe through which the fluid is flowing but due to the friction first loss frictional losses losses in the fitting and the enlargement losses as well as the contraction losses so let us see the first as the frictional losses so why the frictional losses occurred so student when the flow of fluid it experiences the frictional forces this will cause a loss in pressure so type of fluid flow including the turbulent as well as the viscous also influences the losses so in practice the fluids are rarely handled in the viscous flow and here the in general pressure drops it has occurred due to the friction in liquid and we can say that here the pressure drop is directly proportional to the velo velocity directly proportional to the density of the fluid directly proportional to the length of pipe and is directly proportional to 1 upon diameter of the pipe so this relationship are proposed in fanning equation for calculating the frictional losses so have to just keep it in mind the fanning equation for the calculation of frictional losses and this fanning equation has given that is delta p is equal to 2f u square l rho divided by d so this equation has utilized for the fluid flowing through the straight pipe where the f indicate the friction factor d indicate diameter of pipe delta p indicate pressure drop whereas the l indicate the length of pipe so this is nothing but here the frictional losses now the friction factor that we already discuss in the last equation this value depends on the various factor that is the following factors includes the nature of flow what type of flow whether the viscous or the turbulent flow and the second factor roughness of the inner surface of the pipe 
so this table it indicates the approximate value of the roughness factor now the condition of pipe consider the smooth brass copper or the lead pipe it has the roughness factor 0.6 whereas when we take new steel or cast iron pipe it has the value 1 if it is the old steel pipe it has 1.6 if it is badly rusted cast iron pipe it has the roughness factor 2.5 so from this table what it indicates what that is the badly rusted cast iron pipe has the higher roughness value or the higher roughness factor now let us see for the viscous flow this pressure drop has given by the equation that is hagen poiseuille's equation which has given us 32 l mu into n divided by d square we already seen what do you mean by l what do you mean by this u what do you mean by n and what do you mean by d okay so here this n is indicate as what here that is the totally related to the viscosity okay now the frictional losses whatever it has occurred that are permanent as the potential energy and kinetic energy is converted into the heat so student you have to just keep it in mind the frictional losses are permanent these are not the temporary now the next thing let us see the next one this includes losses in fitting second type the losses in fitting so losses in fitting again the fanning equation it is applicable for the loss in a straight pipe and here in this case when the fittings are introduced in straight pipe this causes the disturbances in the flow which results in the additional loss of energy now as shown in the diagrammatic presentation the losses in fitting may be due to the change in direction for example here the elbow fitting so elbow fitting this is the best example of what the change in the direction second one is what here change in the type of fitting this includes the coupling as well as what here wall as well as the meter so these are again the two losses in fitting due to direction change in direction or change in type of fitting now here the next thing is what here equivalent length of fitting is given by the equation if you have to calculate here the equivalent length of fitting is equal to equivalent length into the internal diameter consider here for the globe wall if you have to calculate the equivalent length of fitting now it has given equivalent length as the 300 see the globe wall coupling equivalent length 300 and internal diameter as 50 so you will get the value 15 meter so this means what the globe wall is equal to the 15 meters so straight line so this 15 meter, meter straight line so this length it is substituted in fanning equation to obtain the energy loss due to the fitting so this is nothing but here the losses in fitting so again uh, i will just revise here the losses in fitting you have to just keep it in mind this has to be occur due to the change in direction or the change in the type of fitting so this is all about what the losses in fitting next enlargement loss now enlargement loss this is related to what here if the cross section of the pipe enlarges gradually the fluid adapt itself to change section without any disturbances so no loss of the energy but if the cross section of the pipe it suddenly changes then loss in energy is observed due to the it is and these are greater at this point than the straight line pipe 
Now in this case we observed that u2 is less than u1. So why the u2 is less than u1? The reason behind this is what here in sudden enlargement that is in second diagrammatic representation in sudden enlargement the velocity of flow at larger cross section is less than the velocity at the smaller cross section so that's why the u2 is less than u1 now here more simplified way we will clarify this concept by taking the one example that is routine example if we take the tomato sauce bottle now this tomato sauce bottle consider half filled with sauce and if we try to invert it in middle portion the flow of sauce is low but when it comes in the area of the neck when it comes in the area of the neck suddenly the velocity of the sauce it increases so same is observed in this enlargement losses and for enlargement losses the equation is nothing but delta h is equal to u1 minus u2 why u1 minus u2 because u1 is greater than u2 into 2 divided by 2g now g is acceleration due to gravity and delta h it is nothing but loss of head due to sudden enlargement now the next one contraction losses now in contraction losses again here if the cross section of the pipe is suddenly reduced the fluid flow is get disturbed and the diameter of fluid stream is less than the initial value and this is called as what here vena contracta so in short the point of minimum cross section is known as the vena contracta so again vena contracta it is observed for gradual contraction and for the sudden contraction so again here in this case the u2 is greater than u1 because the velocity of fluid at the smaller cross section is greater than at the larger cross sections so that's why u2 is again greater than u1 so in contraction losses you have to just keep it in mind vena contracta so vena contracta this is related to what point of minimum cross section so always keep it in mind point of the minimum cross section is related to the vena contracta so this is about the contraction losses now sudden contraction losses again it has given with the help of equation delta h c is equal to k u square divided by 2g so delta h c this is nothing but loss in head due to sudden contraction k is constant u square that is nothing but the velocity now let us see here the next one that is nothing but here the measurement of the rate of flow of fluid now student just keep it in mind here whenever the fluids are used in a process it is required or essential to measure the rate at which the fluid is flowing through the pipe so specially this is used in optimization of process parameter in chemical industry so again the question it has rise in our mind why the measurement required so measurement required for the calculation of auditing for example town planning of water supply then second one is what the cost of uses in our daily routine life the cost of water use in houses okay so that's why the measurement it is necessary so as shown in this uh, diagram here the major methods of measurement classified as follows first one the direct weighing or the measuring second one hydrodynamic method classified into four type first one orifice meter venturi meter pitot meter and rotameter and last type direct displacement 
meter so student before uh, going to this uh, measurement of rate of flow of fluid here most probably we are utilizing the orifice meter venturi meter then this pitot and rotameter but direct weighing or measuring direct displacement meter this has very less application so let us start the first one direct weighing or the measuring so direct weighing or measuring this is related to what here that is when the fluid flow through a pipe it's collected for the specific period at any point and then it is weighed or measured and from that one the rate of flow can be determined but by this method gases cannot be determined and this by, by because of this here this method can be considered as a impractical so on commercial basis this method not convenient to weigh the liquid so second type that is nothing but here the hydrodynamic method so in that very first we will see the orifice meter so as shown in the diagrammatic presentation the principle of the orifice meter is the thin plate which consists containing narrow and the sharp aperture so when the fluid stream is allowed to pass through the narrow constriction the velocity of fluid increases compared to that of the upstream and this results in the decrease in the pressure head and this difference in pressure may be read from the manometer see here the manometer has attached and with the help of this equation you can determine u0 is equal to c0 under root 2g into delta gh so in this case what do you mean by this u0 u0 this is nothing but velocity of fluid at the point of the orifice meter whereas the c0 is constant and the delta h that is difference in head so let us see here what is the construction of this orifice meter so this orifice meter is considered as a thin plate containing a sharp aperture through which the fluid is flows now normally this orifice plate is placed between the long straight pipe see here this is the long straight pipe so that the other fittings do not alter the flow rate that is being measured so although it is possible to place the orifice meter in the side or bottom for the present discussion here we will see the plate is introduced into the pipe a manometer is connected at the point a and b as shown in the diagram manometer is connected at point a as well as at point b so let us see here what is the working of this orifice meter now student keep it in mind this orifice meter it is referred as the variable head meter so variable head meter it measures the variation in pressure across the fixed constriction placed in the path of flow which consisting of the constant area so in this case when the fluid stream is allowed to pass through the cross section of the orifice the velocity of fluid at point b see as shown in the diagram the velocity of fluid at the point b increases at the expenses of the pressure head so as a result the pressure at point a as a result the pressure at point a is higher than the point b 
so bernoulli's equation provide the basis for correlating the increase in the velocity head with the decrease in the pressure head and the difference in pressure that is delta h it has to be read from the manometer which is attached from point a to that of the point b and as we already discussed this equation is to be used for the determination of what actually the difference in pressure has occurred so this is all about the orifice meter so in orifice meter you have to just keep it in mind student a and b point b point it face some sort of constriction whereas the a this velocity of fluid it will be flowing without any type of the constriction and this orifice meter this is totally based upon the bernoulli's equation so again i am repeating this bernoulli's equation it says that here the increase in velocity head with decrease in the pressure head whereas when it shows the increase in the velocity so velocity this is causes the decrease in pressure head and whenever the velocity decreases it causes the increase in the pressure head so for this orifice meter you have to just keep it in mind about this now let us see the next one that is venturi meter now in venturi meter again the principle it has given when the fluid is allowed to pass through the narrow venturi throat then velocity of fluid it increases and the pressure decreases so difference in upstream and downstream pressure head again measured by using manometer so in this case the equation has given uv is equal to that venturi meter uv is equal to cv into that is under root 2g into delta h so again we'll come to the that is construction and the working of venturi meter so student this venturi meter it consists of two tapered section inserted in a pipeline so two tapered section it is inserted in a pipeline so normally venturi meter is placed through long straight pipe so that other fittings will not alter the flow rate that is being measured the upstream cone is normally the upstream cone again keep it in mind student the upstream cone is normally shorter than the downstream as shown in the diagrammatic presentation so the tapers are smooth and the gradual therefore it is in the downstream are absent and no power loss is observed so in addition the cross section of the high velocity part of the stream is well defined and again in this case the manometer is connected in between the point a and the point b so this is about the construction so only have to just keep it in mind upstream and the downstream short tapered section as well as the long tapered section and the throat of venturi and manometer is attached in between the point a and b now let us see working venturi meter is referred as variable head meter means it measures the variable differential pressure across the fixed fixed constriction place in the path of flow consisting of the constant area that's consist of what the constant area now in venturi meter the velocity of fluid is increased at the throat the velocity of fluid is increases at the throat 
due to the constriction and this results in decreased pressure in upstream cone and the pressure drop in upstream cone is utilized to measure the rate of flow using the manometer so venturi meter it nearly confirms the theoretical equation which is obtained for an orifice meter so on a similar line of equation this equation we already seen that uv is equal to cv under root of 2g into delta h so uv it is nothing but velocity at the throat of the venturi then cv again it is the coefficient constant then ua this is that is uv here it is related that is nothing but velocity of throat of venturi and g is the acceleration due to gravity so this is about the venturi meter now the next student we will see we already seen the two types orifice meter and venturi meter so what is the difference between the orifice meter and this venturi meter orifice meter it is cheap whereas the venturi meter it is expensive why here because orifice meter it is very easy to install as well as what this venturi meter it is the fabrication is highly technical or simply what we can say that here orifice meter it is the homemade construction whereas the venturi meter you have to purchase from instrument dealer only next head losses are more whereas in venturi meter head losses are insignificant next in orifice meter power losses are more whereas in venturi meter power losses are less orifice meter it is used for testing purposes whereas venturi meter it is used in online installation orifice mat orifice meter it enjoys the greater flexibility whereas the venturi meter it is not flexible it is permanent so this is nothing but the difference in between the orifice meter and the venturi meter now student before going to discuss about the next meter here or the tube we have to just keep it in mind what do you mean by head okay many time the question asked so what do you mean by head so again keep it in mind as per the bernoulli's equation the equation represent energy and this have the unit of energy but when we take an it in a numerically it gives the unit of meter which is the unit of height hence these terms are known as the head so pressure head is nothing but height of column of liquid of known density which is numerically equal to the pressure energy term so different heads including potential head we already seen given by the symbol as x velocity head given by the equation u square divided by 2g then pressure head has given by the equation p divided by g into rho so here to just keep it in mind what do you mean by head so what do you mean by pressure head then velocity head and the potential head now let us see the next type that is pitot tube so as shown in the diagrammatic presentation before going to the construction let us see the principle of the pitot tube so pitot tube according to the bernoulli's theorem total energy at any point is equal to the pressure energy plus potential energy plus kinetic energy that we already seen and this has given by the equation u0 is equal to c0 under root 2g into delta h so what is delta h delta h is again difference in pressure head and after deriving the after the derivation here the equation we will get delta h is equal to u square divided by 2g and u again indicate what the velocity at the point of insertion so let us see here what is the construction of this 
pitot tube so pitot tube is also known as the insertion meter and the size of sensing element is small compared to the size of flow channel and the point of measurement may be at the center of the channel as shown in the diagrammatic presentation one tube is perpendicular to the flow direction and other tube is connected parallel to the direction of the flow as shown in the diagram these two tubes are again connected to the legs of the manometer or to the suitable device so let us see the working so in working two tubes are inserted into the pipe as shown in a diagram that is in manner shown in this diagram pitot tube is used to measure the velocity head of the flow now in this tube velocity of fluid is increased at the narrow constriction this result in the decrease pressure tube at the right angles to the flow measures only the pressure head as shown in the diagram the tube that points the upstream measures the pressure head as well as what the velocity head as shown in this diagram that second limb it measures the pressure head and this limb it measure the pressure as well as the velocity head so difference in the above reading it indicates the velocity head so difference in above reading it indicates the velocity head so therefore the reading r of the manometer it measure so in the diagram it shows the r this is nothing but the reading of the manometer it measures the velocity head so this is about what the pitot tube and the equation has already given in this now next let us see here that is rotameter now rotameter again it based on the principle that in this device a stream of water it enters the transparent tapered tube and it strikes the moving plan plummet so during the fluid flow the plummet rise or fall so as a result some annular space or area between the plummet and the tapered tube may increase or decrease depending on the variation of flow rate and here the head across the annulus is equal to the weight of plummet so let us see here initially construction so this rotameter it consists of the vertical tapered tube as shown in diagram which is mounted with narrow end down the tube is usually made up of what that glass on which the linear scale is each so again observe this diagram student the linear scale is each a solid plummet is placed in the tube and the diameter of this plummet is smaller than the narrowest part of the tube now rotameters is available with electric and electronic transmitter for the recording so floats of the different densities are available so that 200 fold range of flow can be measured accurately so floats again it made up of see the floats of the plummet it made up of lead aluminum glass or plastic so this is nothing but the construction of rotameter so student let us see the working of this rotameter so as the flow is upward through the tapered tube the flow of fluid it varies and the plummet which is surrounded by the fluid is rises and falls 
depending on the rate of flow of fluid now the plummet which is surrounded by the flow of fluid rises and falls depending on rate of flow that we already seen but the greater the flow rate higher the plummet rises in the tube so in rotameter pressure drop is constant or nearly consider as the constant so student when the fluid flows the area of the annular space between the plummet again i will repeat during the fluid flow the area of the annular space between the plummet and tube varies therefore the head loss across the annulus is equal to the weight of plummet so in short what we can say that the flow may be read using the upper edge of plummet as an index so area is properly calibrated to the flow rate and the readings may be transmitted for recording integrating and then for controlling so this is all about a working so what the use of rotameter so rotameters are extensively used in chemical industries such as in bulk drugs then again in fermenter then the supply of air again it's controlled through the this rotameter now the next and the last type that is direct displacement meter so direct displacement meter it based on principle this is utilized to measure the flow of fluid in the small lines and the stream of water enters meter and strike the moving parts so rate of rotation of moving part is directly proportional to the velocity of water passing through meter and the displacement of moving part transmitted through a train of gears to the counting dial which is located at the top of moving part so what is the advantage of this direct displacement meter the displacement meters have some advantages over venturi or orifice meter in the sense that the reading represent total volume of fluid that has passed and this volume divided by definite period it gives the flow rate so this is about the direct displacement meter so student these are all about the energy losses and why it occurs and then various types of measurement of the flow of fluids so these are some question for the two marks then for five marks and then for long questions for 10 marks so these are all about the energy losses and the measurement of the rate of flow of fluid so student hope you understand everything so these are some of the references for this lectures so thank you student for the listening